and welcome to our two-part series in Fibonacci and understanding how to use Fibonacci for your trading. Now tonight's class is being recorded. I'm going to ask you all very, very nicely, Okay, please do not contact investing.com, don't call them, don't email them, don't, don't you know, go on their website and chat with them. When the recording is prepared and ready, you will automatically get an email with the link. Our customer service department just can't handle all the requests because we do lots of webinars and lots of languages every day. And so therefore we're asking you, we will, the system automatically will send it to you once we've uploaded it and got it prepared. So if you have it going over to your spam or your junk files, look for it there. It'll get to you in 24, 48, maybe 72 hours, but it will come to you. It's automatic because you're logged in with your email address and the system will just send it to you. Okay. Now, tonight is our first part of this two-part series. So what we're going to do is, the first part, we're going to start learning about what the Fibonacci sequence is, and then the ways Fibonacci is used in trading, and we're going to focus mostly on Fibonacci retracements, and then once we've learned all this, in our next class, we're going to learn to put them actually on the real charts and use them in a trading system. But before we can actually start putting them into a system and, and starting to, to look at them on our charts, we have to understand what we're looking at. Now, the Fibonacci numbers or Fibonacci sequence was developed in, you know, God knows, in the 1200s. And it was moved and became came to the West it, right, not many years later then. It was developed in Pisa, which is in Italy, by a by a scientist or a mathematician actually and it was based on of all things the reproduction of bunny rabbits and the numbers that were produced by these litters of rabbits and the Fibonacci golden rule is based on certain mathematical relationships expressed as ratios between numbers in a series their discovery was popularized in the Western world by the 13th century mathematician Leonardo Fibonacci. They have applications in fields as diverse as biology, music, art, and architecture. It is so unbelievable how often these numeric values and this sequence appear in our everyday life. Now Fibonacci trading is becoming more and more popular because it works in any market including Forex in the stock market, which react easily to Fibonacci numbers and Fibonacci levels. Fibonacci trading involves knowing when and where the market reverses in order for it to keep moving. The most important thing in Fibonacci trading is that Fibonacci levels act as support and resistance. When the price goes up, they act as a resistance and vice versa. Also, like ordinary support and resistance levels, when a Fibonacci level is broken as a resistance, it then becomes a support and can be retested as the price moves. It works the same way when a Fibonacci support level becomes broken, it can then become act as resistance. If you ask why Fibonacci Forex and Fibonacci stock markets work, the answer is we don't know. Okay. There is no scientific reason why these levels work. We, we just know they do. The only thing we know is that Fibonacci numbers work at everything from microscopic materials like DNA molecules to the distance between our eyes and our ears and our hands, even the distance in the planets to our solar system, and the way they work in space even the distance and pathways from the stars in the universe and finally in the currency prices and the way they move up and down Fibonacci numbers can be found almost anywhere in the world now they are key percentages all traders need to know about Fibonacci retracements is that there are certain percentages by which tre trends tend to retrace before continuing in their original direction when a retrace begins, traders can mark these percentage levels as a percentage of the trend's distance and anticipate the possible 
reversals at these levels which can act as another form of support and resistance. Now the key levels are these key levels that come from Fibonacci numbers. They're 23, 6, 38, 2, 50, and 61, 8. Now they go on infinitesimally. They go on in each direction. But these are the basic or the most important levels when applying to Forex and uh, or, or in currency or commodities trading on a chart. Okay. Now, Fibonacci trading is, tra is trading is based on certain mathematical relationships expressed as ratios between numbers in a series. Their discovery has been attributed to, at least in the Western world, the 13th century mathematician Leonardo Fib Fibonacci. These relationships have applications in all fields as to, oh, I went backwards in a slide. Traders found the trends tend to retrace prior moves according to very same ratios in which translates to 23.6%, 38.2%, 50%, 61.8%, and 100% of a given trend. So the numbers we want to keep in mind at all times for trading are 23.6, For example, when a downtrend is finished, as it moves higher and retraces the downtrend, it tends to pause or reverse after it's recovered 23.6%. Then when it's recovered 38.2, and then 50, and then 61.8. Now I'll show you these on charts, because I know it gets a little bit complicated seeing all these numbers, but I'm going to show it to you on charts. But the three most important FIB levels that you should know them in the back of your head. You should be able to say them right off the tip of your tongue. 38, 250, 61, 8. Okay. By drawing lines that show a percent retracement on a prior trend on the charts, traders can better predict where future price moves might stall or reverse. It's unclear why trends tend to pause or reverse after recovering to these percentages of the prior trend, but they do. If you go back and look historically over thousands of charts and thousands of assets and put these lines on a chart, you'll see how true they are. Okay. We don't know why. When we see it in how a hand is grows or how your face, your eyes, and your ears are all proportioned, you see it in so many places in the world. We don't know why these numbers work, but they just do. So this is kind of thing like you've got to take on blind faith. Okay. You can test them all you want. Okay. You can see how often they do work and why they work in this market, but how they're all over the world affecting every type of market out there. Not just market, every type of thing that's happened. We don't know. Okay. So it's unclear why these work. So view fibs like electricity. It works. So use it even though you do may not understand why it works. The proof that it that they work is that they become another widely accepted and watched support and resistance indicator. And you have millions of traders around the world swearing on these things. Okay. And you have most of them say that they work. Okay. As with any technical indicator, now the FIBs have become widely accepted and watched, they create a degree of self-fulfilling prophecy. And so become even more useful for anticipating price movements. So here's an illustration of how Fibonacci works. So I've given you some handouts. They're there for you. You can download them, same to your computer. But here, when this is the downtrend, the downtrend to which we applied the Fibonacci lines. Okay, this is the downtrend. Okay, now applying or putting the Fibonacci lines on a chart not not so many years ago was quite difficult because you had to do the calculations, figure out where they should be and everything else. Today, the, the, um, the, the, the new Java charts, just lay them out for you. You just have to pull them onto your chart. Okay, and I'm going to show you that in a second. But if you look at these charts, so first we see the downtrend. Then we see the uptrend begins here and hits a resistance level here and then bounces back up. Three, we see that the 23.6 Fibonacci line of the downtrend retracement. So the price 
found all the way here, bounced back up and it retraced up to the 23.6 line. And then it broke through that, fell back down to 23.6 line and then retraced all the way up here. Okay, fell back to this line, bounced up through and then broke through and where it is back up where it started. Okay. So, The Fibonacci retracement uses horizontal lines to indicate areas of support and resistance. Okay. Now, where you see the blue and the red, those are lines that we've drawn on the chart because they've actually reacted. The Fibonacci lines are on the chart already. These are the dashed lines that are already on the chart. And we have the 23.6, the 38.2, the 50, the 61.8, and the 100%. And we can see how many times that once we lay this grid on the charts, how many times the price has actually reacted to these lines on the grid. So they are calculated first by locating the high and the low on the chart. So you have to locate the high and the low that you're looking for. Then five lines are drawn. The first at 100%, which is the high on the chart. The second is a 61.8. The third is at 50, and the fourth is at 38.2, and the last one is at zero. Okay. There are a significant price movement up and down, and the new support and resistance levels are often near or at those. So let's go over real quickly to a chart, and I'm going to show you this because I know it's hard to actually see it in your mind. So let me just bring you up to some live charts here. So actually on this chart, they're already dropped on here. You see on the right-hand side, so the Fibonacci levels are here. So you can see the 100%, the 61.8, the 50, and the 38.2. Now there are all other different significant levels that we can, we've calculated. But to do this, let's go over. Okay, here is the euro US dollar trading today. Okay, I'm going to take off some of the stuff from my prior chart. Let's take the support and resistance lines off of there so we can get this cleaned up. Uh, let's get my markings off of there. Now, this is an actual live chart of where the euro US dollar is right now. This is a 15 minute chart of the euro US dollar, it's in a bar chart. So what we would do is, this is pretty easy for us. We go over here to the drawing apparatus. We're going to go down here to Fibonacci retracements. And we're going to pull it on here at the high and pull it down to the low of the sequence and then pull it forward. So now we have... So in other words, we've lined it up at the lowest low here, at the swing low. We've got the swing high, and now we have our Fibonacci retracement levels, and this has given us one, two, three, four, five, six, seven levels. So we have all of this right under, so we have our 38.2, our 50, and our 61.8 right here. See the 61.8, the 50, the 38.2, okay. These are our levels, and this is our 100% level. Okay. The, there are other at levels, but they're not important levels or not used predominantly by the numbers. So we now have these support and resistance zones drawn on charts. But you see how easy it is once you get it on the chart. And now we can combine this with our trend line and other types of information. But now we're getting some significant price points. And look how when we, once we put this on a chart, Okay, and all we do is draw it on a chart properly. Look at how the 100 zone was so important to this price. Look at how important the 78.6, then look at how important the 61.8 was. Look at how much price fell on that 61.8. Now we're down here at the 50% line. Okay, now the price has moved back up and it's back in here between the, above the 61.8 and we're going to expect it to either go up to this level or up to the 100% level. Okay. And this is how important these levels can be to price. But before you can even worry about these levels and a chart, you have to understand 
you have to understand what these are. Okay. So let's go back and learn a little bit more about what Fibonacci is, what they're used for, and how you would use these retracement levels before we actually want to start adding them into a trading system and putting them on a live chart. So let's go back to my PowerPoint. Let me bring that back up here. Oh, there we go. Okay. Now, there are many different types of Fibonacci, Fibonacci retracements or Fibonacci something we could add. We have Fibonacci arcs, which is a whole different type of using Fibonacci numbers in an arc. And in our next class, we're going to use it, but it still uses the 38 to the 50 and the 68.1. We also have Fibonacci fans. Okay, these are similar to GAN fans and have a very a predictive quality in their nature. Okay, we also have Fibonacci time zones. So like, unlike the other Fibonacci methods, time zones are a series of vertical lines. They are composed by dividing a chart into segments with a vertical line spaced apart in increments that conform to the Fibonacci sequence, the 1, the 2, the 3, the 5, and the 13. These lines are, indicate areas in which major price movements can be expected. Okay. Now, these Fibonacci studies are not intended to provide the primary indication for timing the entry and exit of a stock how, or an asset. However, they are useful for estimating areas of support and resistance. Many people use combination of Fibonacci studies to obtain a more accurate forecast. For example, a trader may observe the intersecting points in a combination of Fibonacci arcs and resistances. Many more use the Fibonacci studies in conjunction with other forms of technical analysis. For example, the Fibonacci studies are often used with Elliott waves to predict the extent of the retracement after different waves. Now, later this month, uh, later next month, actually, it's January, we have a two week course in Elliott waves. And you need to apply these together with something else. Now, hopefully, you can find your own niche for use of Fibonacci studies and add it to your set of investment tools. So, let's start with retracements. How to use a Fibonacci retracement. Okay. And this is the, the, the most popular use of Fibonacci numbers or Fibonacci sequence. The Fibonacci retracement patterns can be useful to swing traders to identify reversals on a stock chart or a currency chart. On this here we're going to look at in this webinar we're going to look at the Fibonacci sequence and show some examples of how you can identify this pattern. Fibonacci numbers were developed again by Leonardo Fibonacci and it is simply a series of numbers that when you add the previous two numbers you come up with the next number in the sequence. So here's an example. You start out with one and adding one to one gives you two. You add one to two and it gives you three. At 2 to 3, it gives you 5. At 5 to 8, it gives you 13. At 13 to 8, it gives you 21. At 13 to, to 21, and you get 34. At the 21 to 34, and you get 55. So see how when I add 1 to 2, I get 3. Okay. Now, so how does the sequence help you as a swing trader? So Securities will often pull back or retrace a percentage of the previous move before reversing. These Fibonacci retracements occur at three primary levels, 38.2, 50, and 61.8. Actually, the 50 level really does not have anything to do with Fibonacci. Just traders use this level because of the tendency for stocks or securities to reverse after retracing half of the previous move. Here is an example of a graphic explaining the retracement patterns. So what we have here is we have price moving up, then easing back and then moving forward. And this price fell 38.2% of the total move. Here we have, in the second, A, B, and C. A, A was the price thrusting up. Here it fell back, and it was fell back to 50% of the total move and then pushed forward again. Here we have... The third pattern where it pushes up to A, which is the total thrust, and it eases back 61.8% and then moves up again. 
So all three, we started out in the same place and we ended up at the same place, but the market tends to either ease because the market moves and pushes and thrusts, ease and thrusts, peaks and valleys. And these peaks are higher and then the valley is either 38.2 down to 50 or 61.8 and then it moves up to the next peak. After security makes a move to the upside A, it can then retrace a part of this move B before moving again to the desired direction. These retracements or pullbacks are what you as a swing trader watch, want to watch for when initiating long or short positions. Once the asset begins to pull back or retrace, then you can plot these retracement levels on a chart to look for signs of a reversal. You do not automatically buy the stock just because it is in a common retracement level. Wait and look for the candlestick patterns to develop at the 38.2 area. If you do not see any signs of reversal, then it may go down to the 50% level. Look for a reversal there. If you do not see it, if you do not know if or when the stock will reverse at a Fibonacci level, Okay. You just mark these areas on a chart and wait for the signals to go long or short. Okay. Don't use Fibonacci retracements over short intervals. Day trading the foreign exchange market has a lot of volatility. For this reason, applying Fibonacci retracements over short time frames is ineffective. The shorter the time frame, the less reliable the retracement levels are. Volatility can and will skew support and resistance levels, making it very difficult for traders to really pick and choose what levels can be traded profitably. So you would want to put, you don't want to put a Fibonacci retracement on a 5 or a 10 or 15 minute chart. You want to stick with 30 minutes to 1 hour. Okay. Now the goal of this exercise is to find support and resistance levels you wouldn't otherwise see in your main time frame. Once you're aware of these shorter or longer term support and resistance levels, you won't be surprised if the trend pauses or reverses because of them. Thus, you'll be warned about trades that aren't in as promising as they look in your main trading time frame. As a rule of thumb, we want to see support and resistance on charts with time frames about five times shorter or longer than we would normally use. So in other words, if you normally use a 15 minute chart, use a five time shorter or five time longer, okay, in this case, since most of us are short term traders, we would use a chart time that is five times longer. So if you're using a 15 minute chart normally, or a 30 minute chart, a 30 minute chart we would use times five, or two and a half we'd look for a two hour chart. For example, if you trade from 60 minute candlestick charts, you choose five minutes and 4.5 hour charts to see shorter and longer support resistance. If you trade from daily charts, you'd want to use a four to five hour chart to see shorter terms and use weekly charts to see longer terms. If this sounds confusing, look at the illustration using Fibonacci retracements and how shorter term and longer term lurk within time frames. So here we can see a longer term time frame and then we pull these numbers forward to how they would affect where price is today. So retracement levels alert traders or investors of a potential trend reversal, resistance area or support area. Retracements are based on a prior move. A bounce is expected to retrace a portion of the prior decline while a correction is expected to retrace a portion of its prior advance. Once a pullback starts, Charters can identify specific Fibonacci retracement levels for monitoring. As a correction approaches these retracements, charters should become more alert for a potential bullish reversal. The chart shows Home Depot retracing around 50% of its prior advance. So we see where the advance started here on the chart. And it climbed all the way up to here. So you have your swing low and you swing high, this is where you would put your Fibonacci levels on. And then we can see that we have the decline of the total advance at 38.2. And we see this was a significant price. Then we have it falling down to the 50% level. And right at the 50% level, it climbed up and it bounced off there and climbed back up and then came back down to that 50% level. So 
we've identified lines of support and resistance. In other words, what we're trying to do is identify price points or prices in the market that we would expect some type of action or reaction. Again, it's not telling you to trade. It's telling you to expect an action or reaction at these specific levels. Then you can incorporate that action and reaction into your trading system and your and and your decision making capabilities or your trading strategy or your trading plans. Okay. Now we also have inverse retracements, which are the exact opposite. If price is moving up, it's one. If price is moving down, it's the exact opposite. So here we have we have the decline start, so we have the swing high and we have where the decline ends all the way down here and this so this identified our total range of that trend and then we pull our Fibonacci numbers on here with our 100% there and here and it drops the levels on there for us we don't have to do anything and we can then see what levels we should be expecting some price reaction to in the future so an inverse applies to a bounce or a corrective advance after a decline once a bounce begins, chartists can identify specific Fibonacci retracement levels for monitoring. As a correction approaches these retracements, chartists should become more alert for a potential bearish reversal. So in other words, price moved down, went, oh, sorry, I clicked on the wrong button here. So in other words, price moved, okay, we had the downtrend, which is the pink-purple line here. Okay, so we had the full downtrend. Then the bulls took control, and the market, the price started moving back up. It broke right through the 38.2, broke above the 50, but we, we were expecting it to then become very bullish and continue up, but it didn't. It, it lost its momentum. It only went one bar past the 50, and then it came back down, and we would expect some type of a reaction. So keep in mind that these retracement levels are not hard reversal points. Instead, they serve as alert zones for a potential reversal. It is at this point that traders should employ other aspects of technical analysis to identify or confirm a reversal. These may include candlesticks, price candlesticks, price patterns, momentum oscillators, or moving averages. Okay, Peter asks, how do you know which points to use? There are several pullbacks and those major moves up and down. Okay. Once you get a swing high and a swing low, what's a swing high? In an uptrend, it's the highest point it went to before it reversed. A swing low is when a downtrend is the lowest point it went before the price reversed. You then lay your Fibonacci level on top of that and extend those lines going forward. So I'll show it to you again on a chart. It's, it's, you have to understand how to draw a trend line. It's almost like how you find a trend line. So let me pull the charts back up here for you again. Okay. So here we are in this trend line. And now this is a 15-minute chart. So let's change it over to a 30-minute chart. Okay. So we have this price pattern right here. Now, this is a thrust up and a thrust down. This would have been more appropriate, actually, to let's, let's take this off of here. Okay, so we I can identify the the proper way is this was a downtrend. There is a swing high right here. I just put the yellow line on it. And the swing low is right here. The price, this is where price reversed itself. So we would then take the Fibonacci cycle, the Fibonacci tool, come down here and go to Fibonacci retracements, click on that. And what we would do is we would then start our actual longer term retracement line here and we would simply pull it down from
So we have our beginning here. See, so our one or one hundred is right here, and this is our zero point, which is the top and bottom of our cell, and this is the the line going through there. Here now, okay. This gave us some previous ones. This is the downtrend. Now we're in an uptrend here, okay, and. So we identify the swing low here. This is where we put our, our trend line on. And we don't have this we have a swing high here, but we still have it continuing in the uptrend movement. So therefore we can't actually put a a new Fibonacci number because we need a swing low and a swing high. So we're in this continuing trend. So what we want to do is use a part of the prior trend and then bring these lines forward. And we can bring one forward, 61.8 forward. We can bring 50 forward. And 23.6 forward. Now, when we bring those forward, look how important these, line, these price lines were in even the future price movement. So, in other words, price fell down here. It fell 100%. It bounced back up here. Okay. To the 23, kept going up to the 50, the 61.8 level, and it broke through there. And it's at really right now. It hit the highest it hit was at the 70, the 0.78.6 level, and then it bounced back and it came right back down here to the 61.8 level, and it's holding right on the 61.8 level right now. Okay. Now, when this trend continues on outward, and when it ends, you're going to end up with a swing high. You would then use that swing high with this swing low to do your next set of Fibonacci retracements. Okay, you follow? But we're going to do more of this in next week's class because you have to understand what these are before you're actually putting them on charts. So let's go back over to the PowerPoint again. And... Let's wait for the screens to get to. There we go. So, well, well, let me illustrate the point. Using fibs, because unlike other types of support and resistance, you can see shorter and longer term support and resistance lines uh, on a chart. By plotting sets of fibs for shorter term and up down trends that occur within a longer term trend. So, in other words, you have on the yellow lines you see on here are the longer term Fibonacci's and then you have the shorter term Fibonacci's from the most recent trend line. So you can constantly, you, ha you can have several different sets of Fibonacci levels on a chart. Okay, in order to find these Fibonacci retracement levels, you have to find the most recent significant swing high and swing low. Okay, then you then for a downtrend, you click on the swing high and drag the cursor to the most recent swing low. For uptrends, do the opposite. Click on the swing low and drag the cursor to the most recent swing high. And this will just lay your Fibonacci levels on there for you. Okay. Okay, somebody says, what is SR? SR is support and resistance. Now, here we plotted the Fibonacci retracement levels by clicking on the swing low at 69.5, right here, 69.55, dragging the cursor to the swing high at the point of 82.64. Okay. Then the software will magically just put the retracement levels on the chart for you. So as you can see from the chart, the Fibonacci retracement levels were at 79.55, which is a 23.6, at 77.64, which is a 38.2, at 76.09, which was the 50%, and 74.84, which was the 61.8. Now the expectation in this case is for the Aussie dollar that retraces from the recent high, it will find support at one of those Fibonacci retracement levels because traders will start placing buy orders at these levels. So in other words, we had, this was the 
reversal of the prior trend, and this was the swing low. We started an uptrend here, and this was the swing high right here. Once we do, we put our, our and we go to our Fibonacci retracement level tool. We put it on here, and we drag it up to here. Once we do that, it's going to put these levels right on the chart like you saw, and you just bring these levels forward. Okay. Now, as we can see, as we have all this price move, because price moves you know, up and down, up and down continuously, but look at what happened when price started moving down in this downtrend. It hit the 38.2 level, which is the 077.64, which was predicted all the way from this, this trend here, which was predicted days before. It hits this 77.64 level, bounces off of it, so the 38.2 held, and price, this is where the bears, here the bears took control of the market. The bears were in control. The bulls were in control. They lost a little control. We went into a hardcore battle between the bears and the bulls. The bears were able to pull it down to this 38.2 level. They got expired, and the, bear, the bulls took control of the marketplace, and you can see that they held control for quite some time. So again, it's telling the story of the battle in the marketplace. Now, price pulled back right through the 23.6 level and continued to shoot down over the next couple of weeks. It even tested the 38.2 level but was unable to close below it. So later on, the market resumed its upward move and eventually broke through the swing high. Clearly, buying at the 38.2 point Fibonacci level would have been a very profitable long-term trade. Price found some temporary Forex support and resistance at Fibonacci retracement levels. Because of all the people who use Fibonacci tool, those levels become self-fulfilling support and resistance levels. One thing you should note is that price won't always bounce from these levels. They should be looked at as areas of interest or as some like to call them kill zones. For now, there's something you should always remember about using the Fibonacci tool, and it's that these that they are not always simple to use. If they were simple, traders would always place their orders at the Fibonacci retracement levels, and the markets would trend forever. They're only one part of a tool that become part of your trading strategy. The question is, how do we draw these lines? That is the most significant thing you can get on a chart because before you can use them, you have to get them on the chart correctly. So how do we identify Fibonacci patterns on a chart? Easily we draw a Fibonacci grid using swing points. And here is the example. Again here, you can see the markets were moving in an uptrend. The markets eased back and gave you the downtrend Okay, so you actually have this point here, which was your lowest low, okay? You have your high point here, and then your Fibonacci levels went right on the chart. Okay. Let me, I just want to get this off the chart and move forward a little bit here. Okay, draw a grid. Draw the fit grid the FIB grid from the swing high point and the swing low point and the swing point low of your swing. Your charting software should come with this feature. It is a standard option on most charting packages. Now if you don't have a charting package, tradingview.com is free. We also have the tradingview charts on investing.com. You can use them right there. Okay. Now if you cannot calculate it manually by using this formula, calculate the range from the swing high point to the swing low point. Okay. Look at the lowest and the highest point and then break it in, you know, use a calculator, break it in those percentages. Okay. Now, most of the time when you draw a fib grid on a chart, you will notice that the grid lines up with support and resistance areas that you would see anyway without drawing the lines in. So you really do not need to draw the lines in. Instead, you can just look at the chart and estimate where these levels are. Yeah, good luck. Look again at the charts for the, the high swing. If you don't draw the Fibonacci retracement lines in, you can simply tell that you are looking at a chart that the stock has retraced 50%. Because you would draw the lines, you just don't have to draw those colored zones in there. 
if drawing the lines is helps you to better visualize the fib levels, then by all means use it. The choice is up to you. All of us use it. Okay. Improperly applying technical analysis methods will lead to disastrous results, such as bad entry points and mounting losses of currency positions. So here we're going to examine how not to apply Fibonacci retracements to the forex to the forex market incorrectly. Get to know the common mistakes and the chances are you'll avoid making them and suffering the consequences in your trading. Now, don't mix Fibonacci retracement points. When fitting Fibonacci retracement points into price action, it's always good to keep your reference points consistent. Okay. A couple of people have asked about expansion, okay, like or Fibonacci extensions, okay. Now, like I said, we're starting from what is Fibonacci. Then we're learning on Fibonacci retracements, and we're going to learn several other Fibonacci. But Fibonacci retracements are the most popular worldwide. There are many different applications of Fibonacci. But we can only learn one at a time, and that's why we have a two-week course because we'll go over. But they're all the biggest use of them is for Fibonacci retracements, and then we'll talk about arches. We'll talk about extensions. We'll cover them all briefly in the next class. But you have to have some reference and some understanding of what they are. Okay. So new traders often try to measure significant moves and pullback in the short term without keeping the bigger picture in mind. This narrow perspective makes short-term trades more than a big, a bit misguided. By keeping tabs on the longer-term trend, the trader is able to apply Fibonacci retracements in the correct direction of momentum and set themselves up for great opportunities. Right. Just you, you just don't want to keep applying new Fibonacci levels because you're looking at a 15-minute chart and you're looking at very short-term trends. You want to pull back, like we said earlier, calculate it five times what you actually use. If you're normally trading and using a 15-minute chart, pull out to a two-hour chart as a standard set of rules. If you're using a half-hour chart, okay, or you're looking at a one-hour chart, then start using use your Fibonacci's in a longer term. Apply them to, to the five-hour chart. Those numbers still will flow through, but you can't use them in small, short terms because you're applying these little things. So apply them in the longer term, bring those numbers through the longer term trend. So don't use short term trends. But if we take a look at short term, the picture looks much different when you see it on the chart. A Fibonacci replacement, so we look at this same chart. Here we're looking at that same price chart in a longer term trend or longer term chart as opposed to the shorter term chart, it looks much different, but those Fibonacci levels that were applied from the previous, the long term, held true. And that's why where the Fibonacci's that you would have applied to the short term trend wouldn't have. You want to look at longer terms. A Fibonacci replacement applied on a short term friend can give a trader a false impression. After a run up in a currency pair, we could see a potential short opportunity in the five minute time frame. This is a trap. By not keeping to the longer view, the short seller applies Fibonacci from the 2, the 2 12, 15 spike high to the 2 10, 24 low, okay. leading to a short position at 2 10, 97 or 38 38% Fibonacci retracement. So in other words, when you're looking at the short term chart, you would have taken your swing high here. here, applied at your swing low here, and you would have been looking at your 38.2 here. Okay, You would have entered the trade incorrectly. The short-term trade does not net the trader a handsome, a handsome 50 point profit, but comes out at the expanse of a 40 pip advance that follows. Okay. Now, you would have gotten the short-term trade, but if you would have applied those same numbers from the longer-term trade, you would have made 400 points instead of 50 points. Okay, the better plan would have been to enter a long position in the pound in this asset pair at the two ten fifty level instead of the two ten ninety seven level. Okay, 
So this is why you want to use it in a longer term and bring the numbers forward. But you don't want to rely simply on Fibonacci. Fibonacci's can provide reliable trade setups, but not without confirmation. Apply additional technical tools like MACD, which is my favorite, Stochastics or RSI, oscillators will support the trade opportunity and increase the likelihood of a good trade. Without these methods to act as confirmation, a trader will be left with little more than a hope of a positive outcome. Taking a look at figure 5, which is a figure name, we can see a retracement off of the medium term move higher into Euro Japanese yen. Beginning on the January 10, 2011, which is the Euro JBY exchange rate rose as high as 113.94, okay, which is all the way up here. Applying our Fibonacci retracement sequence, we arrived at a 38.2 pullback at 111.42, which is right here. Following the retracement lower, we notice the stochastic simulator is also confirming the momentum lower. So we see the stochastics with the crossover at that same point. So we have the convergence with down here, and the stochastic has fallen down to 2626, which is below the 30 line. So it is supporting an overbought um, market, an oversold market. So it is confirming that bounce. So we use it with other indicators. Now the, now the opportunity comes alive as the price action tests our Fibonacci retracement at the 111.40 level on January 30th. Seeing that this is an opportunity to go long, we confirm the price point with the stochastics, which shows an oversold signal. A trader takes this position would have profited 1.4% or 160 pips. As a price bounced off the 111, it traded as high as the 113. So, in other words, let me just erase these markers. Okay, we had this long-term uptrend. Okay, we have our appropriate swing high and our swing low. We put our Fibonacci numbers on here. This is the 38.2 retracement. Okay, when the markets came down here, bounced off of that retracement, you would have traded the asset to go up. You got the confirmation right here with your secondary. Uh, line from stochastics, which broke below the 30 line, which telling us the market was oversold, and we went in with a buy position to buy going upward, and we would have made the profit from 111.42 to about 112.50. That's a nice little profit. Once again, don't use Fibonacci over short-term intervals. Day trading in the foreign exchange market is exciting, but there's lots of volatility. For this reason, applying Fibonacci retracements over a short-term time frame is ineffective. The shorter the time frame, the less reliable the retracement levels are. Volatility can and will skew your support and resistance levels, making it very difficult for the trader to pick and choose what levels can be traded. Not to mention the fact that in the short term, spikes and whipsaws are very common. These dynamics can make it especially difficult to place stops and take profit points as retracements can create narrow and tight confluences. So, like I said, we want to use a five times level drawback to the five times chart, put our Fibonacci levels out there, and then bring those prices forward to your current tight, tight uh, trading zone. Now, Next week, we're going to look at stops and with safety, where to put your stop losses, your take profit points, how to multiply this out and where you would possibly go and how to use it with candlesticks. Then we're going to look at using the strategies, and then we're going to look at other Fibonaccis. We're going to look at Fibonacci time zone, Fibonacci extensions. We're going to look at Fibonacci arches. But once we understand the Fibonaccis, we understand what swing high, swing lows are, we can very easily put the rest of those on charts and apply them to our trading strategies. So I'd like to thank you very much for joining us tonight. Play a little bit with your charts. Drop some Fibonacci's under. Look for your swing highs and swing lows. Get them in the right positions. If you go to tradingview.com, you can see how other traders are actually doing them. Just in search, do Fibonacci, and you'll see current charts of traders are, are uploading there so you can look at with the Fibonacci retracements. And you'll see exactly how they're doing it. And then I'll see you next week. So, okay. You guys keep asking me the same questions. 
Barry, should we focus more on Fibonacci retracements instead of Fibonacci extensions? I'm not saying one is more valid than the other. Okay. All I'm saying is that Fibonacci retracements are the most widely used of all. So that's why we're spending most of the time on it. Your individual likes and dislikes, your individual comfort levels, and your individual trading strategies, what you've decided to use, if you want to become an expert at Fibonacci extensions, then be, do so. All of these are valid. Okay, They're all used in different people's trading systems. I can't dictate to you which is better or worse. I could tell you what is more prevalently used in the marketplace. I could tell you what I use, but I can't tell you whether what not to use. Okay, so it, it's your call. Okay, you once again, somebody says, can you use Fibonacci extensions or retracement for binary options? Okay, you go back to the same problem we're talking about. Binary options on the whole are made in short-term trend zones. But since you're only predicting whether an asset will move up or down in binary options, you can use these support and resistance levels because when it comes to the 38.2 level and bounces off of it, for a binary option, you're going to be making a 15-minute trade saying it's going to go up. If it hits that level and bounces off of it, you're pretty safe it's going to stay above it, but we don't know how much time it's going to stay above it. But you, in binary options, you're simply looking to predict which direction it's going to move, so it will help help you make that decision. So thank you very much, and have a great trading week. Have a great holiday season. We'll see you after Christmas, and we'll pick up this class next week at the same time. Have a great week now. Enjoy the season. Bye.